Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Score Signature event, checking in for 828X. Redux coming right out here in Alabama. Redux, incredible season so far. Five tournament wins uh, and also a few uh, skills awards too. Some congratulations on all the awesome success with that. And they're looking great on the field. Just watch them play as well too. Redux, Redux, a lot of great stuff going for it. One thing we'll be talking about right away is their predictive autos and how that's factoring into their match strategy, how that all comes together. But we'll also be, uh, of course, featuring some of the robots on there, uh, running a short round on their robots as well too, talking about some weight reduction, what they're doing. And at the end, we'll be talking a little about how they're using video videography for match strategy and looking forward to their future matches as well too. So it's definitely a contender here at this event. Let's learn more about them. Come up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grill Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Kevin, let's start talking about uh, some things in regards to programming your robot. When we were talking earlier, you mentioned you're running some predictive routes in your bot. Yeah. Talk to me more about what that is and how you utilize okay, it. Okay, before we talk about the routes, we use two we use two uh, sensors. We use an inertial sensor in the central in the middle. This is for PID programming, ODOM if we choose to, and we also use an optical sensor for color sort. Now, we haven't been able to use it because of the lights, but in a regular event, we would be able to use it. But our Auton routes, so we use two routes. We use a uh, ring side and we use a goal side. Our ring side gets five rings of our color and our goal side gets two rings and it does a defensive maneuver. Before matches, we usually um, scout each team to determine which routes we should use and which programs we should use. So for last match, we ran our goal side. And the big thing about our goal side is after we put an alliance stake and we clamp the first goal, we go in the middle and disrupt the middle uh, two rings of the opponent's oh. rings to disrupt any ring rush and any oncoming um, rushes that they want to use. So let's pass over to Fritz, who's going to be talking about the uh, short brown that you have on this robot here. Let's talk about uh, what a short brown means, because every time I talk to teams, they kind of have a different interpretation of what that is. But I know before this, too, you weren't running any sort of lady browns. So talk about that transition into that. Um, initially, we were running a um, direct mech, which basically involves a variation of the redirect where the ring will pass through the intake and into a cradle, which will fold out. But the problem is it would only fold out up here, which would mean you wouldn't have any versatility to anything down here, such as alliance stake or flipping goals or even using a wall stake mechanism as a rush mechanism. Um, and this is why we made the switch to a short brown, is a short brown has the benefit of being able to fold all the way out, which to me that means being able to have much more versatility and options when designing, programming, and doing anything in this game. Because, for example, we used to have a flipper mech, which would allow us to quickly go into the corner, grab goals and flip them down, and also unflip them. But now we can just use one singular button, one singular control, and just use this for practically 90% of the stuff on the field. It's also, we have a pusher mech right here, which allows it to be the rings always consistent. So that way, one of the biggest flaws of a short brown is that it doesn't um, get it on the wall stake all the way. It's just slightly too short to be able to smoothly do it on. So what this does is it pushes it slightly forward, so that way it's consistently at just the right height, so that it will easily fall off when it gets onto the wall stake. And that's all completely passive, just based off that tension in the rubber band, yes. right? Do you ever have to change that rubber band out? Uh, this one, um, not exactly, because this one just pulls it away, so then it doesn't get in the, the path of the intake. But one noteworthy thing that we did use is we used a very, very old Vex Robotics part, is Rather than using string, we used this very tiny chain, which makes it so that it's rigid, fully rigid when it's on. And this is important because I see a lot of teams who have done this use string, but string has tension to it. And that makes it to where if it's just slightly too far, it's not going to fully push it forward. So that's why we have a much more rigid design. So whose idea was it just find this random old Vex part out of somewhere? Uh, we just found it in the workshop. We have a very old workshop. Um, our coach has been doing it for quite a while. And um, we just discovered it and realized that 
this could, uh, while the chain itself is too small to really be used for any motion because it skips really, really bad, yeah. um, it is very helpful for using to transfer like this type of distance energy from other parts because it's still strong. It just skips on sprockets. Speaking of some changes, Chase, let's talk about some weight reduction techniques that your team has been implementing. One thing that I'd love to hear too is after you describe that, do you have any advice for maybe other teams who are looking to do that? Um, well, for reduction, I will say what's big about our bot at least is our three buys. Well, they're actually cut three buys where he's a, a one buys, and they really they keep the same strength as the, the, the three by while providing less weight than the whole three by itself. So they use that here, here, on our actual lady brand itself, and it's been really good for us. It hasn't bent at all, it's been really strong. So I think it's really trusted the team should do that. If they want to introduce some pounds on the robot, it's really, really easy to do. Not much effort taken at all to do it. So was your weight reduction based off of necessity or was it more a strategic decision? I'll walk me through that. Well, it kind of goes back to our first spot. Um, we had a seven motor drive back at Haunted and we kind of realized that even though it was such a fast drive train, it was about 14 pounds. So we didn't get the full effect of the uh, drive train. So what we decided to do was emphasize weight reduction so that as we build our bots, we get the full speed of our drive train while also maximizing our race on the, on the field. Duncan, let's uh, walk me through the uh, passive hang there usually as well too. Uh, just how that all is packaged together on your robot. Sure, so we have our main couple of support struts right here. And then the real idea here was just for the Lady Brown. So the passive climb was kind of a bonus. But since it's such a big part of any of the games where you run out of rings to score, we decided to make it as easy as possible and as low maintenance as possible to try and hang. So we have a couple of rubber bands tensioning these very small pieces of C-channel. Each of them has a spacer on the end that'll hook over the edge of the climb and a couple of zip ties that are just stuck into these couple of main support struts. And it means that they can't go too high, but if they need to, they can go just as low. And our reliability has been pretty good. We can't really argue with our performance so far. I'd say you have a pretty good run so far uh, this year, too. Uh, Elsie, i got to ask you, as, as a fellow videographer, I have a, a big passion and appreciation for those who document a lot. But you're also utilizing this uh, for some match strategy in the future as well, maybe even for playoffs as well, too. Walk me through what you do and how your team is taking advantage of it. Um, well, when we record our matches, we use, you, we use these videos to see what our teammates do and what our opponents do so if in any future matches we're alliance with an opponent or we're opponents with our previous alliance we can see what they tend to utilize more and what we can do to stop them from scoring or defending um, we also record our skills matches so if something goes wrong we can see what went wrong so we can fix that in our code or maybe fix a broken part um, with practice matches, we just record to see if we cross the line too much for Auton or if um, we push a ring too far and we can't grab it or we just don't have enough time. So you make your own video on demand, go back and review it, that sort of thing. Yes. Uh, they're very cool. Well, Redux, truly a complete package. Thank you so much for taking time to tell us more about your team and your robot. Wish you best of luck here at SCORE. And I think a lot of things that teams can take and learn from this well, too. So good luck the rest of the way, and thanks a lot. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.